Welcome to the Snow West Show. I'm Ryan Harris, your host, uh, joined here today with co-hosts uh, Justin Stevens and Rhett Clark, test riders for Snow West. Uh, before we get started here, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Polaris. The wait is over. Snow check is here. It's your once a year chance to build and pre-order your dream mountain sled with exclusive factory customization and up to a four year warranty. That's a four year warranty. Like, Have we ever had a four year warranty offered no. on spring orders that you can remember? That's a pretty big deal. Did that is. Did they do it last year or this the first year? I don't know. I I, I remember three year warranties. Yeah. yeah. But four year. Yeah, four years is awesome. Impressive. Four years is impressive. Yeah. That just shows that the manufacturer believes in their product. Uh, be the first to get your hands on new models like the Pro RMK, KS RMK, and now up to seven pounds lighter with Snowcheck exclusive colors, customizations, and technology. Or check out the RMK SP that's easier to ride and even, easy, even easier to own. Stop dreaming and start building. Snow check ends March 27th. So you got a, you got a little bit of time there. Uh, talk to your local Polaris dealer or start your build at Polaris.com. All right. Uh, today's show is going to be kind of a ride recap from uh, the Polaris 2025s. Uh, kind of the theme of the year is is we didn't get the early season media intro ride. You know, we were all set to go over to Polaris. Uh, uh, they have a facility in Wyoming. Uh, a couple of places in Wyoming that they that they ride out of, and we were going to head over to uh, there in January to do kind of the early season intro on the 2025s, yep. and got hit with a blizzard, and they shut down the highway, and they canceled the event anyway. Yep. Uh, avalanche danger was high, so it was probably a good call, but uh, missed out on that early ride in January that we normally get, uh, which which last year. That was probably one of the best rides of the year. Yeah, that was uh, a good that, one. <laughs> that intro ride on the 24s last year. Uh so we did get a chance to get on all the 2025s uh, and spend a few days on them. Uh, we'll talk about some of the changes and updates. Um, if you're really looking for an outline of of what all has changed uh, for the 2025 Polaris RMKs, go to snowwest.com. There's a feature uh, there on the website that breaks down everything. Uh, there's another podcast episode that kind of talks about all of these changes and updates. Basically, what it boils down to in my mind is is a weight reduction. They lost seven pounds for this year, and then they worked on reliability and and cleaning up a few issues that they've had over the last uh, last little while. Uh, changes to the P twenty two clutch, uh, another brake system change. You know, with, with the brake throttle interlock. Yeah. Um, had new headlights, new seat. Yep. Know, Cool new things there, uh, and then then the RMK SP that we mentioned in the in the intro. Did you you spend a lot of time on that? Yeah, I did actually spend a little bit of time on it. It was fun sled. I mean, it reminded it reminded me. You know, it goes back. I think I had a little shorter lug on the track, and um, just kind of reminded me of just just kind of your basic Polaris. It was a lot of fun, though. I mean, it goes anywhere. I didn't have any issues getting where I wanted to go. It's pretty versatile. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you lack a little horsepower, obviously. I, and when I, while I was riding it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's why we like the nine R and the turbo and the <laughs> and the boost. You know, I mean, it's uh, but very capable sled. And then I think they mentioned the price point, wasn't it sub sixteen? Yeah, it's it's really affordable uh, package there. And uh, so so the SP you can get with the it only comes in with fifty five. Is that I gotta look at that. Uh, 275 yeah it only comes in the 275 track and only comes with the 155 track uh so the 155 275 track on the sp and you can get that in the 850 or the 650 yeah and, and we had both of those out um that 850 sp was just a good sled like yeah like yeah it's not the super aggressive brett turcott style but it was easy to get on it and just kind of go anywhere yeah. Just kind of cruise around. Yeah, I ended up on it after we were in those deep drainages. We were playing around there. We did a couple of lines in the drainages and then kind of started finding our way out, I guess. We looked for another spot, came back around, and um, even following a couple other sleds that were digging some big trenches and stuff. I mean, you had to keep moving and stuff, a little a little shorter track and a little shorter lug, but but very capable. Just felt really grounded and easy to ride. So, What do you think of the SP, Rhett? I loved it. <clears throat> I think it's a very capable sled. Um, price points awesome on it compared to a lot of the high prices we've seen the last few years on s new sleds, new models. But uh, the suspension is very plush for trail riding and, and whatever you want to do. The only time I notice it being a hindrance is like a big G out. You hit hard, it'll bottom the suspension, but override 
overall ride quality. It was super plush and a uh, very capable motor. A 275 track's awesome. It works good. It's just a good all-around sled. You can't go wrong with that SP. And the 650 has great power also. So, Yeah, the, the 650 doesn't get a lot of attention. Like, like Nobody really talks about that. No. Normally, they don't even bring them to snowshoe, but they had one there this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that thing runs really well and, you know, it's, so it does have the quick drive too. So it's a belt drive system, uh, 275 series eight track, uh, it has the Polaris IFP shock. So the difference between the SP and a, like a chaos or a pro RMK, you're going to get Walker Evans shocks on the pro and the chaos. And with the SP, you just get the Polaris internal floating piston shocks, just your very basic inexpensive shock, but they're pretty comfy, you know, if you're not yeah. going fast, not hitting stuff hard, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty comfortable shock. Well, and I, when he mentioned that, you know, that lower price point, if you want to introduce your kids or, or your wife to snowmobiling and have them ride with you, I mean, that's definitely, I think most guys would probably go for a little bit more power, but, but if you're not looking for that power or you have somebody that's a little bit lighter <clears throat> that you want to have ride it, I think it'd be a great, very capable sled. So at a good price point. Yeah. So then going on to the, uh, so the pro RMK, the chaos RMK, you can get that with uh, Patriot boost or nine R you can also get it with the eight fifty. And a, uh, I feel like most of the time we, we see a chaos or a pro in a nine R or a boost, right? Mm. Um, so they, they made these changes to the, to all of the RMKs. Some of them are changes only made to the boost in the nine R. So the, the snow check packages, right. um, and some of those are the, I think it's in one of these slides here, the, the, the pro light seat yeah yeah so the pro light seat that's only going to be on the pro rmk the chaos rmk that's a, a pound lighter it's an inch lower uh you've got the new throttle system so new throttle block new throttle lever new cable yeah did you know a teflon teflon uh coated cable yeah did you feel the difference yeah it was impressive. And the snow, you know, it's got a little gap behind the cable section that I think kind of held snow before where people have had issues with those. And and uh, it, it cleaned out really easy. A couple times I rolled the sled over. It just, you know, I'm used to hitting the throttle or banging on it, but it was already kind of cleaned out. So yeah. yeah, there used to be kind of a cavity, a notch in the <coughs> throttle block back there with a the cable set. <coughs> yeah. And it was just packed full of snow. And then, then you had some like 90 degree corners where the throttle lever pivot was and yeah behind the lever and just lots of places where ice would pack in there yeah and this this one doesn't have any that i could see it didn't really have any edges and cavities where you're gonna pack a lot of yeah snow in there. and we were in a wet ish snow i mean it wasn't it wasn't super light so if yeah. it was gonna pack in there i would think that it would so did, yeah, did, did the shape feel different to you I didn't really I, notice. I, I, I'm most of what I notice is just like standing looking down at the throttle. There's a huge window, yeah, f for snow to go through. So there's nothing to build up on. Yeah. And then the throttle pull felt super smooth. Were you there? I, I thought one of the guys had mentioned that that Teflon cable will actually help move snow outside of it. If any snow does get in there, eventually the snow will work its way out. Hmm. So I, I didn't catch that. I I did catch something earlier on one of the intros where they uh, they say that the shape is pretty much the same as the old you know, throttle flapper. But to me, it felt a little different. Like the ratio was a little bit different. It, it's a smooth, it's a really smooth system. Yeah. Um, and, and the old, the old one had the, the throttle position sensor was like a, the pivot point on the throttle would move a little bit. So that, that would move and then the throttle yeah. would pivot. Mm -hmm. Now it just moves. Yeah. This one just pivots. Yep. So you, you eliminate that, that two stage throttle position sensor. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I didn't, I, you could tell there was a difference, but it wasn't anything like a couple minutes on the sled and you don't even think twice about it. So, yeah. And it's a, it's a slimmer package. Um, it, it just, it looks better. Like the other one looks yeah. like it was a holdover part from the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it, and it, it gives you a little more room on the handlebar too. Um, you know, while we're talking controls, the, the haze brake system, uh, is a, is a pretty good system as well. And so Polaris controls have improved over the last several years. Um, speaking of brakes though, did, did I give you guys that info on the, the brake interlock? I think I only have it on here. So the brake interlock. So you remember model year 23, there was a recall yeah. on the brakes. Um, and so what they, what they did to solve that was put a warning light on the dashboard that said that you are, 
you're engaging the brake and the throttle at the same time, which is it's how you ride right. mountain riding. Yep. It's not, you know, it's not atypical for that, but just a little bit of finger pressure would engage the brake. So it was, and then the clearance on the, on the brake caliper, the rotors were really close to the rotor or the, the pads are really close to the rotor. So a little bit of pressure on the brake would kind of make you drag the brake a little right. bit. So they put a warning system on there. The engine would valve down after five seconds. Um, I think I got that on here. Yeah. Model year 23, 24. Brake throttle interlock. Five seconds of interlock would cause a valve down. So you lose power. And then 10 seconds of interlock would shut the engine off. So you would be riding along and the engine would, would lose power and then it would valve down. Um, I didn't really notice that. Like, like I noticed it on a 23 with the update, mm -hmm. but on a 24, I haven't noticed it hardly I haven't at all. Either. Yeah. And I, I think the change there is on 24, they increased the clearance on the brake pads versus the rotor. So huh. that helped out a lot. Uh, model year 25 though, they changed the software side of things. So now, uh, three seconds of interlock, you get a warning light on the dash. Okay. And five seconds of interlock, you get valve down. But all you have to do to reset that is let go of the brake or let go of the throttle for a couple seconds. Yeah. And then it resets. You don't have to shut the engine off anymore. Yeah. Which I kind of thought that's what we had before, but it, it never seemed like, it always seemed like you had to restart, like shut it off. Yeah. Previously restart. you had to restart so, the engine yeah. to clear it. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, and, and I'll be honest, the other, you're riding these, uh, it's no shoot. I don't, I didn't really notice that. It's something that happened to me quite often on our previous rides and stuff when we rode that older system before their update. So, so yeah, maybe I, that, maybe that clearance and the new, new I was update. worried about going into 24 and I didn't really notice it on the 24s at all. Yeah. And the 25s definitely yeah. didn't even, didn't yeah, even get so. to the point where the light would flash on. Yep. Uh, so they must've, uh, they must've worked on that and made that work well. So. Uh, new headlights. Uh, this is all RMKs. So that new throttle system is all RMKs. Uh, the changes we just talked about to the brake, that's all RMKs. Uh, lightweight LED headlights, this is all RMK. So they, they had that, uh, what they call it? The night night blade? Yeah, I think so. Where, where it had the little orange accents inside of it. Cool looking headlight, but heavy. Yeah. So they were able to take, uh, what was it, two and a half pounds out of the headlight? Yeah, and I, I mean, it, this one may not have if quite as, the look may not be quite as cool as the as the old headlight, but I, I don't know that I care too much what my yeah. headlight looks like. <laughs> I don't think it's one of those things where I, I bought a sled because of the headlight. So that's <laughs> some ph photographers notice. <laughs> <laughs> I heard yeah, them. yeah, it was Tristan talking about it. <laughs> mentioning <laughs> headlights yeah. and yeah. they're coming at you for a photo. Yeah. No, the coolest part of the old headlight is when you shut the sled off. Yeah, you look walk around and look at it, and those orange accents would stay on for yeah. a yeah. while. But. No, it looked cool, but I think for for the purpose of the sled, I think people would give up the that cool look and those LEDs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, so two two and a half pound weight reduction on the headlight that's that's pretty significant. Yeah, you know I'll take that any day of the week. Uh, you know Polaris has this philosophy. I think I've got it written down here. Nails uh, nails at Polaris, who's involved with the engineering team and marketing, uh, says that they have an internal saying. Everything gets better when it's lighter. You know, makes total sense. Yeah. And I, and I just wish everybody else would get on board with that as well. You know, because <laughs> yeah. we, we always have the argument of like, okay, well, would you, would you give up durability for less weight? Would you give up horsepower to have less weight? And my response is just, I don't know. Just give me less weight. Yeah. Like, like why do I have to give up something? Just give me less weight. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the best of all worlds, right? I mean, I obviously, yeah, I'd rather it last than I. I've, I don't want them to push it so far that the sled breaks down all the time and you can't ride. But I think I think you're right. I mean, we're all like, no, I want it lighter and durable. So make that happen. <laughs> I think they have the same saying at my gym. I go, to, <laughs> <laughs> everything's lighter, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, more weight reduction. So you got a lightweight steel drive shaft. Um, the yeah. dual extrovert drivers, those came out last year. Yeah. Um, but now they're, now it's on a, a lightweight drive shaft. So you get a little bit of uh, reduction on rotating mass in the drivetrain. So that's a pound. Um, and then the uh, running boards. Yeah. Did, Did you, you take a look at those? Yeah, I was wondering if you had. I, I was I was sitting there. We were standing with uh, Andy Mills and, and Cal and... 
and then we just had a minute where you guys were off jumping sleds, I think, and we were looking at some of the differences. And and uh, I said, well, what what is the difference in the in the rails? Because like to look at them, I don't know that you could really tell. I mean, it looked like maybe the spacing was a little different and and things. But then he started to show us where they actually did almost like a little angle or 45 down from the edge of the tunnel, um, which I hadn't really noticed all day riding because I usually get a little snow build up right there along the edges, and I feel like my feet kind of get pushed out and uh hadn't noticed that at all but i thought that was pretty pretty um pretty smart of them to to recognize that that flat edge probably had a lot to do with that build up so so they got rid of the got rid of as many 90 degree inside corners as they could right yeah up against the tunnel yeah which makes sense to clear out snow so and then open up the spacing on the footbed yeah so those are the crossbars are narrower and the, the holes are, are are bigger, so it's easier to, for stuff to draw through. Yeah. Did you notice a difference in traction, foot traction? Not really. I mean, I, I didn't. I, I didn't feel like it was less. So. Yeah, I couldn't tell a difference either. Yeah. I, I think, think felt pretty good. <clears throat> Blair's, the running board traction's always been great. Yeah. I think it's just right on par with what it was before. Just more places for snow to fall through. Yeah. I've kind of always felt like I think Polaris has done a great job with their running boards. I mean, it's kind of a, a dumb thing to to praise, but at the same time, it's where you spend all your time. So as far as just my, the way my feet sit on the running boards and comf how comfortable they are and how well you stay on them, I, it's never something I worry about unless I'm doing something stupid. Yeah, I remember back. <laughs> I remember when the 2013 Pro came out. So you had, you had the Pro RMK released in 2011. And then the 2013 came out with a whole bunch of changes. Yeah. And they were talking about rigid, you know, rigidity and rigid chassis and everything. And th they were talking about how that running board being extruded aluminum and just not flexing. Because at the time, back in 2013, if you bounced on anybody else's running board, you could just bounce flex. that sucker down an inch or two. Yeah. And theirs wouldn't. So every time you put input into the running board, it was translating into force rotating the sled. Right. Yeah. And I, that really caught on. You know, and now, now you see extruded aluminum running board edges on, on the skidoos. Um, Arctic Cat's got pretty aggressive running board yeah. as well. But uh, So a little bit of weight reduction there. And then the, the lightweight serviceable suspension pads in the, in the rear suspension. So that, that is the, that's the big bracket mounts inside the tunnel that has the hangers for the rear suspension mount. So those are lighter. I don't know what they did. I, I haven't been able to look at it close enough to really see what they did there. But those two combined, the running boards and the suspension pads, that's another two and a half pounds. So so there's your seven pounds. Seat, running boards, suspension pads, lightweight steel drive shaft, headlight. Seven pound weight reduction. Did you feel, uh, so we had, we had chaoses and pros. We had boosts and nine R's. Did you feel like they felt lighter, handled differently, rode differently? Compared to the 24th? <laughs> I don't know. Players is always feel light. So <clears throat> seven pounds is, you know, you go right through the snow and build up seven pounds of snow pretty fast. And it's hard to tell. But, it, I mean, it's a progression, right? It's getting better. It's lighter. It's hard to feel seven pounds on a snowmobile. Yeah, I was trying to think uh, when you say that. I mean, I, I don't know that I could specifically say, like, wow, it felt a ton lighter. Um, <clears throat> I, I noticed things, you know, like the comfort of the throttle, the, the running boards always being cleared out easily, things like that, that maybe were, um, even the seat, you know, location and stuff and maneuverability over top of the sled. I mean, it sounds silly, but those are probably the things I noticed more than, than actual weight. But. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a little bit of inertia when you're trying to get, you know, pull it over on its edge. Um, especially with like the headlights, because that's that's far from the roll center and it's kind of high up on the sled. So yeah. you, you can kind of pick up on that. Um, it'd be nice to go bounce back and forth from a 24. I spent a lot of time on, on Cardi B, you know, our favorite 24 right. of the year. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, going, leading up to this, you ride in the 25s and yeah, the, the weight adds up and, and you can really feel, yeah. you know, in certain areas you can feel that, that difference, but especially on a year like this year where you're, you're not sinking into the snow as much. Right. And that's when the weight comes into play more. Yep. Uh, what's the next thing we have there? We already talked the, about the SP. Uh, so some of the 
some of the durability improvements that they made going into 25. Um, you know, these are these are things that I, I think people were expecting or hoping for. Start with the P22 clutch. So the the 850 and the 650 all run the P85, which has been around for years. Proven clutch works really well. For the 9R and the Patriot Boost, they came out with a new clutch a few years ago, the P22, and then they've been refining it ever since. Mm -hmm. So 2024, they went to a billet spider on the P22. And then for 25, now they've changed it to a forged spider. Hmm. And if I remember right, what, what Nels was talking about, the difference there is uh, that forging is just much, is a better process for manufacturing those types of parts. Every, you know, once you tool up, every part comes out the same. Where billet, you're, you're cutting a part out of raw material, and it all depends on the raw material. Hmm. And you're not creating the raw material, you're right. just machining it. So you have a little more control over the, the yeah, material so, quality. Yeah, so the forging is a better process. It creates a stronger uh, part more consistently, like every part is the same. Uh, <laughs> and then they changed the cover, the outer cover on that. And what what they did on that, you guys were, were you guys still in here when, when they did the media presentation, talking about the clutch? Or I think that was kind of the tail end. Yeah, I think I, I might have think missed that left. part. So. so the back side of the clutch cover on the P22, where the primary spring sits there's a little recess cut in there for the to hold the primary spring yeah. so they've made that area bigger the relief is a little bit bigger so that that spring has a little bit of room to move as, as it's compressed it can slide yeah. and that reduces uh spring breakage hmm. so it cuts down on the likelihood of a of a primary spring, spring failure yeah. uh and then they changed on the p22 they went to a new clutch bolt uh, the new clutch bolt has a new heat treating process and a new thread manufacturing process. So the way they're treating the metal and then cutting the threads is different. <laughs> and that combination makes that bolt stronger. Um, anything else on there? Yeah. So there, there's the P22 changes. Um, but but you're not really feeling that, are you? I mean, you, it's not something you're going to feel. No, I don't. I didn't feel that, any difference in that. that. forged spider, I feel like, might be a little bit heavier. I'm guessing that's heavier than the billet spider. Yeah. Probably. So if you're really splitting hairs, you might be able to feel something in there, but I, I didn't. I mean, it, yeah. 9R seemed pretty responsive. No, I think that's just going to be something you see, just having the sleds last longer and less less clutch failures. So. Yeah. So uh, it, it didn't seem like, you know, the, the boost has a couple minor updates. Uh the, the fuel injector aux harness, so the auxiliary fuel injector, uh, injector they changed the the wiring and the material, uh, improved that. They improved the sealing on the turbo seal, the process the, to, to seal that turbo. So you have a little more efficient process there. Uh, new engine mount on the PTO side. It's a, it's a two-bolt rear mount now. Um, new starter and Bendix. So... The, I had to Google what a Bendix is. Do you guys know what a Bendix is? <laughs> I'll be honest there. I don't. I have to figure out what the heck that is. It's the little, uh, it's the pinion gear that, that when you pull the rope, it's the pinion gear that pops out and engages the front oh. wheel. Huh. And so it's spring loaded. And when you pull the rope, it makes that thing pop out, grabs the flywheel, turns the flywheel, and then and it pops back, back in. in. So apparently there's a new Bendix. <laughs> <laughs> for, for what that's worth. Yeah, the Bendix. Yeah. That's what I'm going to tell everybody. My sled has <clears throat> the new Bendix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh new rear new bumper on the rmk uh, a little bit stronger more durable oil bottle they, they changed the mesh inside of there so it reduces the the likelihood of air bubbles to build yeah. up and then trap an air bubble in the in the oil line mm. uh get rid of that uh rail caps yeah it was kind of a big one i think because they had some issues with stabbing right and uh, then replacing i guess to replace it they made it a little bit easier to replace now you don't have to take that whole assembly apart you could just change out the the yeah anti -stab. Cause, because wasn't it 23 there it, it's all one unit mm -hmm. so if you had to fix one or the other you had to take it all apart yeah and if it broke it all broke so i think is kind of what they said too yeah because so. you remember when we walked into 24 the media ride in, in uh, uh, wyoming mm -hmm. in january of 23 Yep. You walk in there and, and the slide rail, it was, it's the new slide rail and it just had the high effects that went up and then it had the anti-stab, but no cap. And it was like, 
that that doesn't look right. Yeah. It just didn't look right, <laughs> but it worked. But I think there were a few issues out there with it, with the track clips coming around and catching the tip of the high effects. Yeah. And part of that problem was, from what I heard, from what I understand, um, the screw holding the high effects to the rail, that torque wasn't set right. Oh. So the high effects wasn't pulled up close enough on some sled so that clip could catch that edge and anyway going back to 25 adding a, a rail cap yeah and it's separate from the anti-stab kit so you can replace either one yeah yeah it just made it sound like it was maybe a little more durable and a little bit more serviceable so yeah and that's not something you're gonna feel like you didn't feel any difference there did you no nope uh recoil rope guide that's new uh reduces wear on the on the rope uh 7s display do you guys play with the 7s very much i did this year more than yeah. <laughs> years past but it it was more so i'd been riding the players a lot jumped on a skidoo and got away from the group and then realized i couldn't see where everybody was <laughs> so then i was like i'm getting back on the player so i know where everybody's at <laughs> you get used to having the comfort of knowing where another rider is you know if you're in the backcountry or something like that, that seven S display is pretty, pretty awesome to have. Yeah, if you're with other riders that will show up on there, I think, I think it's pretty cool. I, I hope they'll continue to develop that. I think there's a lot of people asking, you know, hoping that someday maybe all the manufacturers can talk to one another. Um, which, you know, maybe it's just a cool feature, but maybe it's also safety. You know, I, we had we've had a few times where somebody gets stuck, and I always loved. Would we have eighteen guys, twenty, fifteen? <laughs> yeah, would we have eighteen? <laughs> and it's like, hey day? guys, where are you? And it's like, why we we dropped down and then went left. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we're take two drainages over. I mean, nobody knows where that is. So yeah. anyway, it's kind of it's pretty cool the technology that you can kind of track and see each other and and hopefully keep track of each other and help find somebody that's stuck or so it's been interesting <clears throat> that uh just you just kind of catch stuff and you hear stuff and, and feedback from people on the consumer side and then uh manufacturers you know engineers and people on the manufacturer side that buddy tracking system on the 7s is almost as a big as big of a buyer decision as like patriot boost hmm. like people are like no i don't want to buy that it doesn't have buddy tracking you know, that, that's a big selling point. And I've, I've never really looked at it that way because we typically do all of our testing in the same area and yeah. kind of know the, the spot. So it's pretty easy to say, yeah, we're, we're by the, we're by the brown tree. Right. Yeah. And there are four or five guys, or, you know, I mean, it's a smaller group. It's usually a little easier to stick together and stick closer, but, but yeah. So one thing they talked about, so it's got a new switch. There's Wi-Fi back in it. Um, fuel readings. I, I, I did notice that on the 7S, like on the 24s, like if you weren't flat, it showed it was out of gas. Mm. <laughs> if the nose was up, the tail was up, it was it was always low. Um, but they're adding a couple new software features to Ride Command coming this fall. Like by the time you pick up your sled, open ride areas. So for North America, U.S. and Canada, it'll show open riding areas. Hmm. And it also shows something called heat mapping. Now, if I understand this right. This shows you where other 7S displays have recently been riding. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> that could be a little hmm, controversial. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know if that means like like people are going to be able to poach areas a little easier, but but it also helped, it, you know it would help you get out of an area too. Yeah. So I don't know. That's something I need to understand better. But I mean that that's where we're going, right? I mean this technology is going to just keep expanding and including. <laughs> Things to the point. You go ride in Colorado and you're following some, oh, this, there's been some guys here before and you end up on Chris Brandt's line. <laughs> not getting out of here. Not for long. So. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Brandt's <laughs> line is like <laughs> this, all over the mountain, just <laughs> squirrely line. Uh, like like 10 miles of squirrely within a half square mile. <laughs> <laughs> Every single line that you could possibly pull through the tree. And, and I guess, the trees, I, right? I guess you could turn that into a video, video game type scenario, right? You can... <laughs> Chris Brandt could upload his tracks and you can go to follow if you want. So yeah. <laughs> try, <laughs> try. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Wait. I don't know about that one. I, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are pretty protective of their riding areas and of course everybody thinks their riding area is only their riding area, but, but there are some places that people might not want to have publicized. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that hit that heat map plays out. Maybe I'm just mis misunderstanding how it, 
how it works. But um, what, what did you think uh, this year, just, just Patriot Boost and 9R? Like, how did they perform? How did they ride? Um, gosh, they're just great sleds. I, I really enjoy being on them. I, I love the way they handle. I, um, you know, I, I always kind of joke they're, they're not the greatest in, into your riding area and we usually don't ride long trails, but we do at snowshoot. So it's always rough to ride in, but, but that's not what they're built for. And so, um, but it seems like once we get up in the mountains, I mean, it's probably one of the most comfortable sleds for me to be on as far as, uh, maneuverability and, and just being able to put that sled exactly where I want to go, never really thinking in my mind, do I have enough power, or enough lift to get up and out of the snow? And even when you do get stuck, I had a couple of times where following up through, we were pretty tight trees. And of course there's stuff underneath. So we, we caught a few things here and there, which sometimes stop you in your tracks, but it's amazing how easy it is to get out. <laughs> I mean, you just grab it. Even if you don't have anybody pulling, I mean, a lot of times you can just get it packed enough. It'll kind of hop up out and let the sled go and, and you're out, you know, and, and still on an incline being able to track your way out. So I'm just, just amazingly, uh, well-built and, and, uh, just perform really well. But, um, I think my favorite, I still probably prefer the chaos. Um, I love the pro it's well, very well grounded, easy to ride. Um, chaos is just a little bit more fun and, uh, maybe a little bit more playful and kind of in those tight tree sections, maybe a little bit easier to maneuver. Cause, um, if you can get that front end up, I can get it to kind of turn and go where I want it to a little bit quicker. So, so uh, kind of turning on the tail end of the track rather than yeah. turning the whole sled like it's a knife edge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the pro is pretty planted. Yeah. Like there's, there's a pretty, I mean, it's a, it's a very noticeable difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Both very capable. I mean, both of them, it gets you where you want to go. And, and then I, I really do like that three, two, five track. Um, and the stuff that we were in the other day, it was just kind of perfect for that. I, I still don't, I still really haven't ridden one. I, I have to admit, I haven't really ridden one in like a super hard pack, uh, late spring or maybe even early spring where you just don't have a lot of deep snow, but in the deeper snow, that three twenty five track really, really handles and performs really well. So did you ride it down the trail? The three twenty five? Yeah. The the snow will yell at you a little bit. <laughs> if you go, go too over fast. 50. <laughs> yeah. Well I never went too fast, so <laughs> it's it's it forty five on the trail. Yeah. Yeah, we never we never went over forty five. Uh, it's, it's interesting though, because that, that 325 track is durable. Yeah. Like we've every, every 275 track we've had, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wear it out basically, you know, split some lugs or something. 325s, I was worried about this year, especially where it was marginal snow. Yeah. It's in better shape than the 275 tracks. Yeah. And it's been snow and, and stumps and twigs and rocks. And (laughs) I mean, there's been a lot of stuff pass over that yeah, it's track been, so. it's been like a hill climb course on finals day every time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it seems to have held up really well which um I, i'm sure everybody was a little nervous about going into a new track new season it's and maybe even where they say well don't go too fast <laughs> there's when whenever somebody puts a caveat on something like a track it makes you a little nervous but i don't i think it's performed really well too so yeah but, uh patriot boost <clears throat> or nine r right where, where do you kind of lean on those two Mm, they're both really fun. <laughs> I don't. Uh, as far as buying one, the the price we've talked about over and over again, the nine R is priced pretty close to the Boost, and so at that point you're like, why don't I just buy a Boost? As far as riding them, they're both just amazing snowmobiles. They're they're predictable. They do what you want them to do. They don't do anything crazy, like react to different snow conditions. You, you always know what you're going to get when you get on a Polaris. You know what it's capable of, you know where you can take it. Like it builds confidence as you ride it. Um, as far as picking one over the other, it's it's tough. I'd, I'd probably take a 9R um, unless I'm the one buying it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> then for a little bit more money, you might as well have a boost because the, the boosts are so fun. Yeah, that's a tough one. They are I don't know. I mean, there's there's instances where that that boost would come in super handy, but um, just that tiny bit of maneuverability that you get with that nine R, and s- still tons of power. Um, 
it's funny because it's funny you ask that because I did switch back and forth like back to back a couple times between those two and and uh, I don't know that I could really say I loved one better than the other. <laughs> In fact, I'd get on one. I'm like, okay, I'm on the nine R, and then maybe it did something I didn't like, and then I got back on the turbo, and maybe it did something I thought was going to happen but didn't, you know. And so I, they both are really good in the in the trees and one thing that we did have a lot of was a lot of either hard track underneath the snow or stumps or little things and i i did feel like you know between the polaris and other manufacturers that's one place that it does definitely shine um whenever i'm either cutting a side hill or heading up through something i don't feel like the sled wants to pitch me off of it even when you cut across an old an old track or following somebody up through the trees seems like I'm always, Ryan's always first, and so I'm always <laughs> second or third. So I you're don't know dealing, what you're talking about, <laughs> cross old tracks. So you're de- yeah, I know. You've never been there. So, um, But yeah, if you're cutting across somebody's track or weaving in and out of trees. I just don't feel like, I feel like it's, you hit those. I'm not, I'm not wondering what's going to happen. I'm not wondering if it's going to pitch me sideways or toss me. Um, but, yeah, like I said, <clears throat> you know what you're going to get with players. That they handle the same and and breed confidence into your riding ability. The more you ride them, the more comfortable you get on them. They don't react weird or do anything quirky while you're riding it. So would you say it has effortless control? And lift. <laughs> Instant lift. <laughs> Instant lift. <laughs> so I, I just, I'm on, I'm on Blair's website and I just snow checked two. So same track length. These are 155, 325. They're both chaoses. Same color, everything. They both have 7S display. Uh, the Patriot Boost is twenty three thousand one fifty five, and the nine R is twenty two thousand six fifty four. So, five hundred dollars difference. Five hundred dollar difference. Could be because I would gravitate towards the nine R. Like I would probably rather be on that all year. Like yeah. But man, the for your the everyday boost, sled boost for five hundred bucks. Yeah, sure. Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. Look, go back ten years and and look at any sled you could buy then, and think, oh, I got a. I'm going to add a turbo to it for 500 bucks and have a warranty on it. <laughs> yeah. Which one are you going to take? Yeah. I, I I guess they look at, so if you take the price of the 850 and then you say, okay, you're going to spend this much money to do a 900 kit. You're going to spend this much money to do a boost. Like you're going to be about the same money into it. All right. So two mod sleds, two ways to build a mod sled. If you start with an 850, but well, yeah. and and maybe I mean I don't know if it's fair to look at it that way. We keep we keep trying to compare the two, like well, nine R's right there with that. But maybe maybe that we're not maybe they're not two different sleds completely. Like here's a price point, and then here's your next step up. Like you're saying, they're they're two different ways to mod a sled. And if you like the boost turbo power, then then that's your sled. If you want just a naturally aspirated, you know, big bore, then the nine R is your sled. So I don't know that it'd be that much different. You know, when back when people modded sleds, it's the same thing. Some people took them to Carl's and had them do a big bore, and then some people put a turbo on them. So it's just different power. Some people do both. When yeah. You, yeah. When you <laughs> put true. it that way, Ryan, um, looking at two different ways to mod a sled, doing a big bore, doing a turbo, um, and the price point, you get a lot more performance out of that boost. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I could argue that like, you get a lot more horsepower um, and you get a lot more elevation performance. Like, yeah, like, like Brant, true. Brant is a boost guy because he rides at yeah, 12, 10, 11 feet, yep. 10, 11, 12,000 feet. Yep. Um, we're, we're more at like 75 to 95, 95 max, like yeah. on a really big adventure. But, um, the, the nine, are, I, I ride those two differently. Like the boost you can get off of a boost, get onto a nine R and do things a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. The boost, you kind of, you kind of have to carry a little more speed because the bottom end isn't fantastic on a boost. Like that's where the nine R rips. Yeah. Like that's really the big difference, right? Is the bottom end. Like if yeah. you're not going fast and you're in really tight <clears throat> terrain, yeah. the nine R has more on tap, more performance on tap. Wouldn't you say? Or am I right? Yeah. It's uh, depending on the RPM you're in. The nine R is is right there, ready to go all the time. Whether it's, you're at the bottom or you know, initial throttle or half throttle, I think it's there, or it's or the boost is more wide open throttle. Yeah, I I I feel like that. I feel like I, I, maybe it comes down to type of riding, you know. And and I guess you you got to look at how you ride. I mean, if you're if it's all day tight trees drainages like 
playing around, jumping off rocks, different things like that, and you just want that low end torque that 9R has and super lightweight. I do think there's a maneuverability difference in the two, and I don't know how much of that is. Um, I mean, there's maneuverability and throttle response. I, I mean, those two kind of go hand in hand in my mind, you know, depending on how fast you can get into the throttle, it changes how quickly the sled can come over and how quickly you can react. So, so I do notice with the, with the boost, it doesn't engage quite as hard on the bottom end. Um, so I have to think a little bit earlier about my decisions and stuff. And maybe the players, the nine R is a little more forgiving in those types of situations, but um, not everybody likes to play just in the trees all day and bounce around back and forth and do side hills and tight trees. So if that's not your thing and you're looking for some climbing and, and maybe high speed, you know, um, maybe bigger open areas, uh, really worried about just deep, deep, deep days. I, I don't know. That's, I guess, uh, I don't think you'd be unhappy on either one, but maybe they are geared maybe a little bit yeah, for may, different riding. May, maybe snow depth is the deciding factor for me. Yeah. Like if, if we have a year like last year where it's just every three days is a foot of snow and you're just it's you deep, be deep every day you go, I'm probably on the boost. I'd, yeah. I'd probably go for the boost on that. But the the 9R for me, the, the 9R is the sled that I, I mean, all the years that I've been in this industry on the media side pushing for better mountain sleds, the 9R is the pinnacle of that. Right. It, it, it's a pretty awesome machine. Oops. Yeah, I don't I I don't think I mean the sleds are all capable sleds. <clears throat> Both inside the manufacturers like we're talking with the 9R the Boost um or moving to a different manufacturer the Skidoo or or any of the others. I mean it's not I like you said we're we're totally splitting hairs. I mean, you know, do you like the turbo sound of the Skidoo or do you like the turbo <laughs> sound of the Boost? You know, they they both have a little different <laughs> whistle, a little bit of ramp up and <clears throat> you know, it's it's that's we're <clears throat> pretty fortunate to be able to ride so many different models and different sled brands as test riders. It's it's easy to start splitting hairs like you're talking, and then you know you get people look at us like you guys don't know what you're talking about. You you, you talk about one sled and another sled and another sled. Well, we get to ride all those sleds. Yeah, and it's easier to compare them with as much time as we spend on them. You know. It, most most people don't get to jump from one sled to another sled to another sled yeah. and spend a lot of time on them and I, compare them. I just can't tell if I'm getting better on each sled or mediocre on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so which which 25 Polaris would you would you configure? Start with you, Rhett. Um Man, that's tough. <laughs> I mean, put put your money down. Like, let's go to drop a deposit. Yeah, you got to pay for it. <laughs> that's rough. That's like walking into the gas station and picking between a Coke and a Mountain Dew that day. It's <laughs> same price. Uh, the The price is so, I don't know. I think I'd, I'd rather spend most of my time on a 9R, but when you had to go put the money down on it, I think the boost would sway me. Like, it's not that much more money. And when you wanted that power, it gets there. I, I don't know. What uh, track length and track would you do? I'd probably go to 155 on the Polaris. I'd do a 325. I really like that track, um, especially like we rode it last year. I'm just unreal traction out of that thing. So I, I'd i probably end up going with the Chaos Boost 155 and a 325 track. Cardi B. Let's, yeah. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Justin? Uh, it really is a tough one. I... I would want the boost so bad, but just based on how I typically ride, I, I do think for my everyday riding and throughout the season, I think I would go with a, with a 9R <clears throat> Chaos uh, 155 Series 9 through 25 track. So I, I, I like to think I'd go by the boost. I just, and, and I do love it. Um, I don't know. When I was riding them the other day, I'm just like, this boost is awesome. Like, when you <laughs> grab a handful, it's so fun. But I just... Um, I don't know. I find, find the people I ride with and most of the riding that we do, I feel like we're just kind of cutting side hills and tight trees. And, and, and in those circumstances, I really just kind of want max maneuverability and, and that sled seems to do that for me. So, yeah, I think I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm doing the nine R <laughs> over the boost. I'm doing one, a 155, 325 track. I love that 325 track. It's more durable than the 275 from what we've, what yeah. we've seen. Um, and it's, to me, it's the weight too, you know, 
there's a 20 some odd pound difference between 9R and, and Patriot Boost. And yeah. for the, for the direct, it, it's like going to a, it's like going to a candy store or something like you're saying. And, and like, I know this is the one I should get, but I really <laughs> want this. And the 9R is like the one I should get, but I really want the boost. So it's like a protein <laughs> bar and a candy bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, I should yeah. be eating the protein bar, but I really want candy bar. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's something about that boost. We had a few times the other day, like you, you take off up through something, even where those guys were stuck, and and uh, <clears throat> you know it's just super steep, deep, bouncing over logs and stuff, and you just you just grab a handful, you're almost kind of in and out of the throttle because you're going so fast up the hill. I mean, it's uh, there's definitely a thrill factor there with the boost. <laughs> So. I, th I think the pro arm K is probably the protein bar on the chaos. <laughs> is that what the it candy is? Bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't. Yeah, we I mean, we touched on that the pro arm K versus versus chaos, but I, yeah, I'm doing chaos all day long. Yeah, I I I love the pro. I mean, there's something about when you do jump on the pro. I I feel like um, I don't know if this is the right way to say it because it's still a way fun sled. But to jump from the chaos onto the pro, I feel like the fun factor goes down just a little bit. I feel like I've lost just a little bit of that. I, I agree. I'm still, I can still like go anywhere I want to. I can still turn it straight across the side hill. It's very grounded. Um, but I don't know. There's something about all of a sudden the front end's not coming up. And, and I've had a few times when I'm like grabbing a handful thinking, okay, the front end's going to come up now. And it mm -hmm. kind of doesn't. But super, very capable sled. So I, so I just snow checked uh, a chaos 850. Everything the exact same as the other two sleds that we did. So 850, uh, 155, 325 track, painted tunnel. I mean, it, it, it 7S display, everything's the same. So now we're 19,000, 19,055 on the 850. So you're, you're 23,155 on a boost. Yeah. 22,655 on a 9R and 19,055 on an 850. Are you are you snow checking an eight fifty at that? That's definitely an option. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I still like the eight fifty. I think it's a very capable sled. Like I don't think it's that far behind a nine R. Like a, you know, a couple of grand. Like you buy an eight fifty and that's still competitive. I, I think the eight fifty is a dialed sled, but because of the nine R, we don't talk about it very much. Mm -hmm. Huh. I think I'd still buy the 9R. <laughs> <laughs> I I did spend a little time on the 850, and like I said, it's very capable sled. I mean, it, it just went anywhere that I wanted to and handled and performed really well. It just it takes me back to before we had the 9R, and I kept saying I just wish I had like a quarter more throttle. I just want that much more, and that's what I feel like you get with the 9R. It's just it's got that added that added kick. So. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, well, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors, uh, Polaris Snowmobiles. Check out Polaris.com. Start your snow check build. Remember, you've got until March 27th to uh, go build your own on uh, snow check. Uh, stop by your local dealer and get your order placed. Uh, this is the, the time of year where you can customize your sled. You can get uh, slide rail colors, uh, tunnel colors, body colors. Uh, Pro and Chaos kind of have their own unique colors this year which is cool um you can pick your engine package 850 uh, 9r patriot boost you can also get the rmk sp uh in a 650 or an 850 um players got a lot of cool new stuff out on the trail side too yeah dynamics suspension on the vr1 and the nd ndx uh let's see indy xdr now has the 9r package so i guess uh i guess all the trail riders were really wanting that 9r hmm which is pretty cool. Pretty cool yeah. to see this stuff continue to uh, uh, grow and develop. Um, thanks to our sponsor, also 320 Guest Ranch. Check it out at 320ranch.com, uh, located uh, just south of Bozeman, Montana. Um, yeah, and go to snowwest.com. Uh, subscribe to the magazine. Check out our merchandise. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more.